Okay, and the final video that I'll be recording in the polynomials unit um, for Unit 3 of 4 Maths Methods is a Solution of Literal Equations and System of Equations. To be honest, this is an exercise that's in a bit of a strange place. It's a random assortment of things. I think it's really just a big collection of questions that they didn't know where else to put them and so they've created this arbitrary section at the end of the polynomials chapter. Um, by and large, they are polynomial functions, although having a look at example 1a that I've just got here, that is not a polynomial function. Polynomials have integer powers. Um, so it's a bit out of place, but it is just um, quite a lot of very good algebra and really good practice. I've actually set quite a lot of questions from this exercise. I think it's just really good basics for you to kind of, you know, warm up on at this early part of the year. Um, so literal equations, we did some um, linear literal equations um, back in the first um, revision video, revision of review of linear functions. Um, you would have done some over the holiday work. Um, essentially, it's just, you know, considering them as regular equations or, or simultaneous equations and going from there. So let's just go on and solve them. So example one, we want to solve the following literal equations for x. So we want to, in the first uh, equation, identify that there is x is only in one place here, so we should really just be able to solve this quite simply by rearranging the equation till we get x on its own. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is take away b from both sides, subtract b from both sides, so we get ax to the power of one third equals c minus b. And then I'm going to divide both sides by a, because multiplication happens after powers, so it's the first thing I have to undo. Don't be tempted by this power, okay, until you've got rid of this a. Um, you're going to get yourself in a mess if you do with that first. So dividing by a, again, that's about order of operations, all those things. Okay, if you think about how the left-hand side of this was built up, you've started with x, you've first of all raised it to a power of a third, then you've multiplied it by a, then you've added on b. So to get back to x, you've got to undo those things in the reverse order. You've got to take away b, then you've got to divide by a, then you've got to do the opposite of a power of, of a third, which is actually going to be a power of three. Okay, um, And then we should be back to x. All right, so let's finish this off. x cubed is c minus b divided by a. And then, as I said, um, if we were to raise this to a power of a third, index laws tell us we, do, we multiply a third times three gives us one, and so we've just got x. So we're going to raise both sides of the equation to a power of a third sorry, power of 3, so that we just get c equals c minus b on a cubed. You might also think about the fact that the power of a third is the cube root, and so therefore the opposite of the cube root is to cube both sides. Um, we'll leave it at that. Okay, part b can't just be solved by rearrangement because we've got x in two places. It's a quadratic. Um, but there's unknown coefficients. You could complete the square here. Personally, I wouldn't bother. I'd use the quadratic formula. So in this instance, quadratic formula A is 1, B is negative K, and C is K. So quadratic formula X equals negative B, so negative negative K, that's K, plus or minus the square root of B squared, which will be K squared. Negative K all squared is still just K squared. Uh, minus 4 times A and times C all over 2A. Alright, so we're going to have K plus or minus the square root of K squared minus 4K all over 2. And there's not much we can do with that. There's no um, square number that will come out that's a common factor to all of that that could come out of the third, so there's no simplification we can do. So pretty straightforward, really just subbing straight into quadratic formula, formula and then you're done. Okay, part C, um, focusing on the x's, which is what we're trying to solve for, we have a cubic equation in x, um, but we have a common factor of x. So always first step of trying to factorise, look for common factors, take them out if you can. So it's x and we're left with x squared minus 2ax plus a squared. And actually, if we recognise that bracket is a perfect square, that's going to be x minus a all squared. And so therefore, solving that equal to zero, either x equals zero or x minus a equals zero. So x equals a. All right, example two, find the coordinates of the point or points of intersection of x squared plus y squared equals 185 
and x minus y equals 3. This is why this is a slightly random exercise. Um, this is a graph of a circle, so it's where a circle intersects with a line. So it's possible they don't intersect at all, it's possible they intersect just once, it's also possible that they intersect twice. Okay, um, so it's simultaneous equations essentially. So if we think about you know equation 1 and equation 2, Equation 2 is linear, it's easy to make x or y the subject here. So I might rearrange equation 2 so that it's x equals y plus 3. And then I'm going to substitute 2 into 1. Um, so that's going to give us y plus 3 squared plus y squared equals 185. Right, let's, now we've got one equation only in y, so let's expand everything out. I'm just going to move that equation to give me a bit more room later on. Um, okay, so y plus 3 all squared, perfect square, is y squared plus 6y plus 9 plus y squared equals 185. So that is 2y squared plus 6y. I'm going to take away 185. So 9 minus 185, or you might prefer to do 185 minus 9, but then it will be negative. Um, so that's going to be 176 equals 0. 2 is a nice common factor there y squared plus 3y minus, uh, what's that going to be, 160 is 80 plus 88. Then we're looking for factors of 80, negative 88 that add up to 3, and that's actually going to be 8 and 11, so y plus 11, y minus 8. So we've got y equals negative 11, or y equals 8. Okay, so there's two points where these graphs intersect, one with a y-coordinate of negative 11 and one with a y-coordinate of 8. We need the coordinates, so we want the x-coordinates. So we're going to go back into equation 2, the rearranged version up here. Um, so we know when x equals 8, sorry, not x equals 8, y equals 8, x is going to be equal to 8 plus 3, which is 11. So that's the point 11, 8. And we know when... Uh, y equals negative 11, x is going to be negative 11 plus 3, so I'm subbing back into that equation 2, um, which is negative 8, and so that is the point negative 8, negative 11. So coordinates of the points of intersection between those two graphs. Alright, example 3 here, find the value or values of a such that the line with equation y equals x is tangent to the parabola with equation y equals 2x squared plus ax plus 1. Okay, so we've got y equals x, I'm just going to do a rough sketch here, I'll get rid of it in a second. Looks like that. We've got a quadratic with an unknown coefficient here. Um, it's clearly a positive quadratic, I don't know where it is, it's got a y-intercept at 1, wherever it might be what we want to find is what is its equation going to be so that it just is the line is tangent to the parabola. So the tangent thing tells us that there's one point of intersection. Okay, That's what's important there. The tangent and the line have to intersect only once. So what we want to do is attempt to find the points of intersection. Okay, so for the points of intersection we would make them equal, we would solve them simultaneously, which in this case means just making them equal to each other. Um, so that is x equals 2x squared plus ax plus 1, which means 2x squared plus ax minus x plus 1, or 2x squared plus a minus 1x plus 1. Okay. If we want just one point of intersection, we need this equation to have one solution. Which means we need the discriminant of this equation to be equal to zero. So we want to work out the discriminant. It's b squared minus 4ac. In this case, b is a, a minus 1, a is 2, and c is 1. So b squared minus 4 times a times c, so let's ex no, actually I won't expand that out, a minus 1 squared take away 8, we want that to equal 0, so the reason I haven't expanded that out is because it's easy to solve a quadratic in this form, I'm just going to add 8, take the square root, and root 8 simplifies, that's 2 root 2, and so a will be 1 plus or minus 
2 root 2. So there are two values of a that make the tangent, um, sorry, make the line tangent to the parabola. That is, the line and the parabola only intersect once. Okay, as I said, um, a reasonable list of questions here. I've tried to just pick kind of one of each sort, um, but equally, you know, quite a good mixture of good algebra practice here that is absolutely worth you working your way through. Um, so that's the end of the polynomials videos. I'd encourage um, some work in the polynomials chapter review, um, but after this we'll be moving um, on to having done the revision of linear and quadratic functions during the holidays, led that into a quick polynomial revision. Now we're now going to go back to chapter one, um, functions and relations from here.